Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel All About Electronics. In this video, we will learn about crystal oscillator. Now, in the previous videos, we had seen the different types of RC as well as the LC oscillators, which can be used for generating the frequencies from audio to RF range. But in this type of oscillator, the frequency can drift due to the change in the temperature or the change in the power supply voltage and the frequency of the oscillation will change even if there is a slight variation in the component values. So in applications where the high level of stability is required, the crystal oscillators are the obvious choice. So not only this crystal provides a very high level of stability, but it also provides the good selectivity. Because the crystals which is used in this oscillator have a very high quality factor, typically something like 10,000 to 20,000 and the some crystals have even higher quality factor. So because of this desired properties, these crystal oscillators are used in radio and telecommunications as well as they are part of many digital circuits and they are used in smartphone and desktop computers for generating the stable clock frequency. Similarly, it is essential part of the microcontrollers for generating the clock signal. So this crystal can generate the stable frequencies from hundreds of kilohertz to even hundreds of megahertz. So in this video, let us find out how this crystal oscillator works and let us also see the different parameters related to this crystal oscillator. So the crystal oscillator works on the principle of inverse piezoelectric effect and it is made up of piezoelectric material. So first of all, let us understand this piezoelectric effect. So whenever some external voltage is applied to certain materials, then they produce the mechanical deformation. So suppose if we apply the AC signal of particular frequency, then this material starts vibrating at the same frequency. And this effect is known as the inverse piezoelectric effect. On the other end, whenever we apply the external force to this piezoelectric material, then they generate the voltage across the two terminals. So somehow, if we mechanically force them to vibrate at the certain frequency, then they can generate the AC signal of the same frequency. And this effect is known as the piezoelectric effect. And the materials which shows this effect are known as the piezoelectric materials. So Rochelle salt, quartz and the tourmaline are the few examples of naturally occurring crystals which possesses this piezoelectricity. And among these materials, the Rochelle salt has the maximum piezoelectric activity, meaning that for the given applied voltage, it generates the maximum vibration. But mechanically, it is weakest and it can break very easily. While on the other end, the tourmaline has the least piezoelectric activity, but it is strongest among the given list. While the quartz is the compromise, between the piezoelectricity of the Rochelle salt and the strength of the tourmaline. And as it is very inexpensive and the easily available, it is the most preferred material in the crystal design. Now you might have seen this quartz crystal which is often used in the electronic circuits. And here is the electronic symbol of this quartz crystal. So in the center, there is a quartz crystal and these two plates are the metallized electrodes which provides the electrical contact. So if you see the electrical equivalent circuit of this crystal, then it is nothing but the RLC circuit. So here this CS is nothing but the motional capacitance. So this capacitance depends upon the elasticity of this quartz material. Apart from that, it also depends upon the area of the plates as well as the thickness of this quartz material. So the crystals which is used in the oscillator are fabricated in the form of wafer and if you look inside this crystal then it looks like this. Then the next component in the equivalent circuit is the series inductance which is known as the motional inductance. So basically it defines the mechanical mass of the quartz when it is vibrating. So the value of this motional inductance ranges from few henrys to the millihenry and it also depends upon the thickness of this quartz material. Then the next parameter in this equivalent circuit is the series resistance, which is also known as the equivalent series resistance. And it defines 
the real resistive loss which happens in the crystal so the typical value of this series resistance varies from few ohms to the hundreds of kilo ohm and it is the function of the crystal frequency then the next component in the equivalent circuit is the shunt capacitance and this capacitance exists because of the electrode plates which is used for the electrical contact so this is the electrical equivalent circuit of the quartz crystal so as you can see this quartz crystal acts as a lc tank circuit and because of that it provides the frequency selectivity whenever it is used with the amplifier in the feedback circuit and using this we can generate the oscillations at the specific frequency now the resonating crystal which is used in the feedback of the oscillator has two resonating frequency the one is series resonant frequency and the second is parallel resonant frequency so while selecting the quartz crystal for the specific application we need to decide at which resonant frequency we are going to operate this quartz crystal so as you can see from the graph at the series resonant frequency the impedance offered by the crystal will be minimum while at the parallel resonant frequency the impedance will be maximum and if you observe over here between this series and the parallel resonant frequency the impedance of this crystal will be inductive while if you go above or below this series and the parallel resonant frequency it will be capacitive so the series resonant frequency can be given by this expression that is fs is equal to 1 by 2 pi under root ls into cs while the parallel resonant frequency fp can be given by the expression 1 divided by 2 pi times under root ls into c equivalent where the c equivalent is the parallel combination of this cp and cs now one more thing if you observe in the graph the parallel resonant frequency is always above this series resonant frequency and this resonant frequency depends on how this crystal is cut during the fabrication and it also depends upon the thickness of this crystal so smaller the thickness of the crystal the larger will be the resonating frequency but if we go above the certain frequency then it is not possible to reduce the thickness of this crystal so in such case the crystal is operated at the overtone frequencies instead of the fundamental frequency so in simple terms this overtone is the approximately the odd harmonics of this fundamental frequency so by operating this crystal at the overtones it is possible to generate the frequencies in the range of hundreds of megahertz so now let's see using this crystal how we can design the crystal oscillator now whenever this crystal is used in the feedback of this amplifier then it provides the 180 degree of phase shift and the remaining 180 degree of phase shift is introduced by the amplifier circuit so that the overall phase shift is equal to 360 degree and the loop gain of this crystal oscillator is set in a such a way that we can get the sustained oscillations now like i said the crystal can be operated either at series or parallel resonant frequency so in this first circuit the crystal is operated at the series resonant frequency so in this circuit the transistor is used as an amplifier and through this crystal the feedback is provided in the circuit from the collector to the base terminal so at series resonance the impedance that is offered by the crystal will be minimum or we can say that the feedback which is provided from the output to the input side will be maximum and by setting the gain at this resonant frequency we can use this circuit for generating the sustained oscillations so now let us see few circuits in which this crystal can be operated at the parallel resonance so whenever the crystal is used in the parallel resonance mode then it is operated between the series and the parallel resonance frequency and it will act as a inductor in the given circuit so this circuit which is shown over here is the colpitt's oscillator and we have already discussed this circuit in the earlier video but here instead of using the separate inductor the crystal is used as an inductor so by using this crystal at the parallel resonance this feedback combination of c1 c2 and the crystal will act as a tank circuit 
and it provides the frequency selectivity which is required for the given circuit. So this is one of the circuit in which the crystal is operated at the parallel resonance. Then the next circuit which we are going to see is the Pierce oscillator. So here this circuit is designed using the CMOS inverter and in this circuit the crystal is used in the parallel resonance mode. So because of that it acts as an inductor and the combination of this C1, C2 and the crystal will act as a LC tank circuit and it provides the necessary frequency selectivity for the given circuit. Now in this circuit if you observe the feedback resistor RF is connected between the input and output of this CMOS inverter and due to that this CMOS inverter operates in the linear range of this voltage transfer curve. So due to this resistor this CMOS inverter acts as an amplifier. Now the value of this feedback resistor RF depends upon the operating frequency but usually it used to be more than 1 mega ohm. Now in this circuit this series resistance RS reduces the overton oscillations and it also improves the startup response of this oscillator. So using this circuit with this crystal oscillator we can generate a oscillations at the desired frequency. Now whenever this peers oscillator is designed using this CMOS inverter then the output of this oscillator will be square wave and that is why this Pierce oscillator is most often used in the digital circuits and the same oscillator is also used in the microcontroller and the processors. But in this oscillator, the series resistance RS and the feedback resistor RF are internal to the microcontroller. So just by connecting the crystal and the external capacitors, we can generate stable clock of the desired frequency. Now whenever the crystal is used in the parallel resonant mode then manufacturers used to provide the load capacitance for the specific frequency and this load capacitance is the equivalent capacitance which is seen across the crystal terminals. So while designing the crystal oscillator for the specific frequency this parameter is very important parameter. So the equivalent capacitance which is seen by the crystal should almost match with this load capacitance so that the crystal can operate at the specific frequency. So if the equivalent capacitance which is seen by the crystal is just above or below this load capacitance in that case the crystal will not operate at the desired frequency. So for the given Pierce oscillator if we assume that the input and output capacitance are zero in that case the equivalent capacitance which is seen across this crystal will be equal to the parallel combination of this C1 and C2 which is C1 C2 divided by C1 plus C2 and if we assume we have a input and output capacitance across the CMOS inverter in that case the equivalent capacitance will be equal to C in plus C1 times C out plus C2 divided by C1 plus C2 plus C in plus C out and if there is a stray capacitance in the circuit then it will also get added with this combination. So this will be the equivalent capacitance which is seen by this crystal and to operate this crystal at the desired frequency this equivalent capacitance should be matched with this load capacitance. So this is all about the different circuits using which we can design the crystal oscillator. Now before ending this video, let us see few parameters which needs to be considered while selecting the crystal for the specific oscillator. So the first thing is the crystal frequency and it defines the frequency at which the crystal is going to get operated. Then the next parameter which needs to be considered is the drift in the frequency and it defines over the period of time how the crystal frequency is going to change and we need to see for the given application how much drift in the frequency we can tolerate. Then the next thing which we need to consider is the mode of operation that means whether the crystal is going to operate at the fundamental frequency mode or at the overtones. So depending upon the mode of the operation the complexity of the circuit will get decided. Then we need to see the temperature stability of this crystal oscillator 
that means over the temperature range how the crystal frequency is going to change then the next parameter which we need to consider is the drive level or the power dissipation across the crystal so we need to select a crystal in a such a way that the drive level or the power dissipation is less than the rated value so these are the few parameters which we need to consider while selecting the crystal for the specific application so i hope in this video you understood the working of the crystal as well as using this crystal how we can design the crystal oscillator so if you have any question or suggestion do let me know here in the comment section below if you like this video hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos